Hi, this is Manuel, Delta Lima 2, Mike Alpha November. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the Uniform 01 antenna, an antenna designed by Delta Juliet 5 Romeo Echo. In honor for our chapter of the German Amateur Radio Club, he named it after our chapter, Uniform 01, uh, which is in Bavaria East. Um, it's the chapter Amberg of the German Amateur Radio Club. Uh, we in Amberg always were a little bit more active than other uh, clubs and had very high density of uh, competence. And this is one more uh, opportunity to show the world what we do. And the original TrueSDX was designed with 80, 60, 40, 30, 20 meters. The 60 meter band was included on purpose because we had always uh, emergency communication in mind. I don't know if you know that, but 60 meter band is a very, very good band to do NVIS communication. NVIS uh, stands for Near Vertical Incident Skywave. So this means uh, radiating into the sky, having a single reflection and uh, covering uh, an area nearby you. So in case the internet stops to work, you are able to create communication, uh, safe communication in your local area, which is an important aspect of ENVIS or emergency communication. Depending on the uh, daytime, it might be necessary to swap between 80, 60 and 40 meters. And for this, we need an antenna that can do that. So Tom designed the Uniform 01 antenna, which will cover all of that. Let's jump right into it. Tom, Delta Juliet 5 Romeo Echo, published his original uh, work in the Funk Amateur magazine in number 6 of year 21. I did not want to hurt their copyright, so I made my own drawing here, uh, which I will walk you through real quick. Uh, the Uniform 01 emergency radio antenna is basically just an end-fed half wave. But by simply adding some connectors in between, we cover a lot of bands. This is the 40 meter section. Basically, if you just add to a uh, broadband transformer, if you just add 19.77 meters plus 0 0.25 meters for the insulator loop and the, the feeding loop, uh, then you already have an antenna for 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. What Tom additionally did, he added sections for 60 meter band and 80 meter band, and by accident it also covers 70 meter bands. So we have an antenna that covers all the bands by just adding two connections. And it's very simplified uh, setup and a standardized setup, I should say, because you elevate that thing at six meters and it works very good as Envis antenna. Uh, I tested it today uh, and we tested it uh, also. You can, of course, also make DX on the higher bands, um, but it works pretty good as Envis antenna because at the lower frequencies and the low elevation height, it will act as Envis antenna on the lower frequencies. In order to make it even simpler, I added some 3D printed parts and uh, used Jan uh, Delta Golf 1 Juliet Alpha November's PCB to make the broadband transformer. And I made a uh, a QRP version basically here, so I can I can have it portable with me. Um, everything you see here will be available uh, as download, to, to, so you can print it yourself, and uh, as files, so you can have your own PCBs made. Um, what you need to know is the five meters minimum length of coax cable is used uh, instead of a common uh, moat choke. Uh, because if you lay that on, on the ground, it will act as common mode choke, common mode current choke. This here is my center insulator that I also use to attach 
a rope here and pull it up like a tree in six meter uh, like a branch of a tree so you can pull it over in six meters of height that's not totally critical but it should be around that six meters or in my case i used a mast from spider beam a pole from spider beam um, this insulator is the 60 80 meter connection um, it's basically the same thing as this end insulator i designed for two millimeter rope uh, and uh, the ultralight wire by dx wire and i do not only use it as insulator i also use it as rope tensioner as shown here very simple and universal parts easy to print okay so now i'm going to walk you through the materials we are going to use let's start with uh, the pcbs those are the pcbs by delta golf one juliet alpha november uh, you can simply upload the files and order them from JLC PCB. This is the um, BNC version. This is the SMA version. I also designed my own PCB here. Um, you can see uh, Jan's PCBs are designed for the AT cores. And when I designed mine, I had the 114 core in mind. However, when I saw that, I'm not. I was not too happy about the the tiny uh, holes I made there. So maybe there will be a revision too. Obviously you'd also need some uh, core material and you need some uh, magnet wire to wind the toroids. You need a 100 pico capacitor for QRP use uh, at least 100 volt NP0 or better. I used for my setup uh, 500 volt, sil uh, volt silver micas, but it, it's not necessary. It's up to you. 100 volt NP zeros are completely uh, suitable. Here you can see the build thing. What the PCB does, it, it solves two problems. Uh, the mechanical necessities you have and the uh, electrical necessities you have. Because everything's uh, fixed here with cable ties. Uh, you have your antenna connection here, you have your capacitor here, and the rope is attached here. Sorry, the rope is attached here, and the antenna starts here. That's the feeding point. I even made this one disconnectable, so I can uh, throw that one out and uh, substitute it by a bigger one. Uh, those are 2 millimeter RC connectors. They are really cheap of Amazon. You can use anything else uh, to connect that. What I was using is material by DX wire. This is their uh, two millimeter polyester uh, string. It's uh, very thin yet uh, very uh, stable. And this is the ultralight wire. Uh, which has a Kevlar fiber inside, so it's ultra tough. I mean, you can use any wire. You can even use like a loudspeaker cable or something like that. But I, if I build an antenna, I want I want it to last. So I use material that's tough and still light, and this is good material. It, you, as as I said, you can use any uh, paracord or any wire that you have lying around however um, if you want yeah <laughs> there's a german saying if you buy cheap you will buy twice and then we need the 3d printed stuff here you can see the connection the 80 uh, the 8060 connection and somewhere here yeah here you can can see it is the triangle where we connect uh, where we put it up I have that on a remained uh, a filament spool. And this is my insulator. I'm also using it as rope tensioner. Very simple. You can use it like so. And if you need more wire, you can simply pull that. You probably know that system from your tent. Very easy, but it works. On this picture, we can see how the band segments are being connected together. 
uh, you see on the right side the male connector, on the left side uh, is the female connector, the golden ones. If you connect them together, you connect it in this case the 80 meter section to the 60 meter section. So if this connection is closed, 80 meter segment is active. If this connection is open, like in this picture, the 60 meter segment is active and the 80 meter segment is not active. You're just adding additional wire length by closing that connection. And what we can also see here is how the um, antenna wire is attached. It's just a loop through the uh, insulator secured by two cable ties, uh, uh, ties and you can also see why we need the additional length. That's the loop, um, the additional 10 centimeters per, per side. On this second picture we can see the same thing for the uh, 40, 60 meter connection, uh, except for the fact that you cannot see the golden connectors. Um, this means in case of this picture the connection is open, this means the 40 meter uh, segment with the harmonics 20, 15 and 10 is active. If you close it, the 60 meter segment is added to the wire length. And just to make you aware of that, uh, of course, to make 80 meters, both connections need to be closed. Um, and in case of 60 meters, the 80 meter, the 80-60 uh, connection needs to be open while the 40-60 needs to be closed. But I think that's pretty clear if you just imagine that as um, adding more length to your antenna. It's as simple as that. Here I'm setting up the antenna. Um, I'm using a spider beam pole. Uh, it's, it's the small version, 10 meter length, um, where I removed some top elements uh, so it's more stable. It's basically just six meters now. So this is the nano VNA plot of just the 40 meter portion. And as you can see, we have a, a low SWR dip on 40 meters. We have a second one on 20 meters. We have a third one on 15 meters. And we have a fourth one on 10 meter band. Then I connected the 60 meter section. Uh, the 80 meter one is not connected yet. And you can see the dip at the 60 meter band here. Uh, the other dips are unfortunately out of band, so 60 meter is the only use for for this uh, element, for this segment. Then I closed the 80 meter connection and you can see the SWR dip on 80 meters and as you can see, there's a second one accidentally in the 17 meter band. So the antenna performs with the dimensions uh, given in the sheet just as expected and very repeatable. Now let's have a second look on what exactly to do. You just measure 19.77 meters, add 25 centimeters to that. Um, the 10 centimeters is for, for the loop in the um, first insulator and 15 centimeters is for the loop uh, to connect it to the uh, broadband transformer. The same is for the 60 meter section. You have 6.63 meters and add another 20 centimeters to that. Uh, 10 centimeters for this loop, 10 centimeters for this loop. And the same thing, you measure 12.8 meters, add 20 centimeters. Um, 
10 centimeters for this loop and 10 centimeters to put it to the insulator. Uh, this rope here can be like three, four meters. If you use my uh, rope tensioners, uh, you can shorten or lengthen them as you need it. You can, if you, for example, use uh, four meters of rope, you can uh, shorten that to two meters or use the full, full four meter length or anything in between. So you can play a little bit with the the height of the ends, including the feeding point. And to finish off this uh, with a little bit of practice, I set it up today, as you have seen in this video, and I made a few QSOs, including one with the creator of this project, Delta Juliet 5 Romeo Echo, and I will share that with you. Very shortly before the QSO, I rope down the antenna and close the connection for the 60 meter band so we can work on 60 meters. Ja, Thomas, vielen Dank. Also wie gesagt, hier schön, schön leise und äh, Bänder müsste ich umstecken. Ich habe vorhin ähm, schon etliche CW-QSOs auf 20 Meter gemacht. Ja, jetzt kommt gerade ein Flieger hier drüber. Das ist sehr interessant. Ähm, aber die Antenne spielt sehr, sehr gut. Sehr ruhig und sehr gut. Funktioniert gut. Ja, es ist immer, wenn, wenn man einfach in der Natur ist, ist es gut. Und wenn dann der Platz da ist, sehr, sehr schmal. Irgendwelche anderen Professorien zu haben, ja, wenn man Fullsize gehen kann, selbst wenn es nicht hoch ist, ist es immer um Welten besser. So, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And just to mention that, that video was uh, made near the Czech border. I drove round about 100 kilometers from my home and uh, the, the QSO with Tom um, was round about 100 kilometers in distance. So it proves kind of the principle and the concept of the Envis antenna. Um, it works with just 10 watts of power. In, in that case, uh, we've tested as well 5 watts with the true SDX, no problem at all. It worked and that's it. <laughs> Being able to communicate uh, from a battery powered device from anywhere you go with your local network is vital in times where we are talking about saving energy because we are out of resources uh, because of war ongoing and stuff like that. So I really suggest to get in contact with your locals, with your local club. Uh, even with the officials, maybe, and uh, talk to them how you can help. Uh, tell them what we as uh, radio amateurs can provide in case of emergency. And create some awareness uh, within your friends and club uh, that people should prepare for such an uh, event, because it's not very unlikely anymore. Um, get your equipment while you can still buy it. <laughs> Okay, I don't want to paint it too black now, but it's better to be prepared and not need it uh, instead of uh, needing it and not being prepared, you know. So the Truist DX is a perfect radio for a portable uh, setup. The uh, Uniform 01 emergency antenna is a perfect addition to that. And with those two devices, you're already pretty far. So you can communicate uh, within a very uh, local range and um, you can do even uh, like exercises and try to uh, do portable setups and, and do uh, emergency uh, communication uh, meetings on band networks. Try to celebrate that, try to exercise that and maybe even enjoy some time out in the wild. Um, if it's not worth anything, it's worth that you uh, went out and uh, had some fresh air. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. I would like that you leave me a like. Um, I would even more appreciate if you would uh, subscribe to my channel if you not have yet. And I see you next time. Send you the good luck. Bye bye.